Siri, open my reader app. Ah, sup. But soft, what light through yonder window breaks. It is the East and Juliet no, is the- No, no Shakespeare. No Shakespeare, really? You've been having me read Twilight all week and you don't want me to read some quality romance? What are you, 16 years old reading Twilight? I'll read what I want. Arise, fair son, and kill the envious moon. Siri, delete my reader app. Hey guys, my name is Dylan and this channel is geared towards helping you to improve your videography and editing. Today's tutorial is inspired by a little green screen magic that I saw on Instagram yesterday from a creator named Jesse Richards. And today we're gonna learn how to do that ourselves. Step numero uno, get a green screen or in my case a blue screen and make sure it is lit appropriately. Here I had the worst setup I could possibly have for keying out the screen. There are tons of wrinkles in this since it's just a camping tarp and I really Really don't have much distance between myself and the background. Ideally get a legit green screen for under your feet and behind you and light both yourself and the green screen separately. But this is proof that you really don't have to have a fancy setup to achieve this. Think about what dialogue you want going on in your sequence. The more back and forth chat, the harder it will be to time yourself so it sounds like you are having a conversation with yourself. Although you can use the flow effect to help blend cuts together a little easier, which I will talk about later. You may just have to estimate about when your green screen self is talking by counting in your head. Also in this shot, I put a green screen up on my phone, but that's not totally necessary. You can use the distort tool to fit what you'd like on the phone screen. Last thing while filming, make sure light is similar in both shots. You want it to look like they're both in the same room together. In Fonica Pro, we'll first take care of the green screen shot. Apply a shape mask to your subject to cut out the things in your frame that are not blue or green and they're therefore can't be keyed out. Add the keyer effect to your shot and make some minor adjustments. We'll use the shrink and expand feature to get rid of any unwanted edges around your subject. Fill holes can help if there are keyed out areas on your subject. It helps to fill them in, obviously. We can soften the edges a little bit to help make them not look so sharp. And if you want your tiny hologram person to look like mine did, add erode to the near max so the edges have a softer glowing effect. Make sure to put your keyed out green screen shot over top of your other shot and we'll use the transform tool to position your tiny person in the place that you'd like. Use the distort tool to push yourself towards the phone and animate yourself popping out. Make sure to press the keyframe button at the start of your shot so your adjustments will save when you raise the tiny person to the correct height. You may need to make adjustments to the position of the person since distorting the shot will put their feet off the end mark. Next, let's add some motion blur to the person as they pop out from the phone. Go to directional blur in the effects window, drag it to your green screen shot, press your keyframe button at the beginning of the shot where you start to pop up and increase the amount of the blur then drag it back down to zero when you want the blur to stop. You can also add a drop shadow to this shot to give your tiny person a realistic shadow. Pull on this bar to position it in the way that you like. I ended up adjusting the position of it to another spot in the end of editing to help it fit in with the other shadows. Lastly, change the opacity and the blur of the effect to help it become a little bit more subtle. Another thing you can add is an effect called wave to give your tiny person this glitch-like effect. Press the keyframe button and change the amount of the effect to zero. Skip two frames, raise it to about 46, and luckily it's saved because you did press those keyframes in the beginning. Skip another two frames and then bring the effect back down to zero. After this, we'll need to make sure that the dialogue matches up so that one of you is not talking over the other one. No, no, no Shakespeare. Shakespeare. If you timed everything just right, you probably won't have to do this. You can speed up by pressing Command B in places and adjusting the speed here, but make sure that the speed increase or decrease is not that noticeable. Here my head barely moves, so it works. I also mentioned that the effect flow can help you to blend fairly seamless cuts as well, but this can end up looking bad if your subject has moved locations at the end of the first shot and at the beginning of the next shot. Try to make cuts where your movements are not that big and then use flow over top. Next, we'll take care of the phone. We'll use the keyer effect to key out our green screen and we'll start placing what we like on the phone underneath the clip. I quickly made this app screen, which was dumb because you can't even see it when 
when it's adjusted to the phone, but oh well, it's those tiny details that matter, right guys? We'll use the transform tool to adjust the rotation size and the position of the image, and we'll use the distort tool to fit it snug in the phone's frame. I also added this heads up display I downloaded from productioncrate.com and I adjusted it the same way I did the picture. Same with a picture of a phone screen with Siri popping up. Be aware if there's other green things in your shot though. Since we applied a keyer to this shot, it affected these plants right here. So how you can combat this is duplicate the clip and place the duplicate underneath the footage. Add a shape mask to that bottom clip and place the shape mask around the phone. Then click invert. Turn off the keyer to that masked clip and now the other green in our shot is unaffected since the keyer was turned off on that clip. Add some sound effects like this glitch sound effect when I use that wave effect on the green screen shot and add a Siri effect when the phone pops up and then consider changing the pitch of your tiny person's voice by using the pitch effect and moving this slider to the right here. Soft what? light through yonder wind. And you're done. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, do me a solid and press the thumbs up button and subscribe if you have not already. I post new content every week and I would assume there's at least one or two of my videos that you would enjoy. So check them out on my channel when you get the chance. I will see you guys next week.